while busy grinding and such, I managed to, managed to run into this thing. I also have a party set up just for this fight in particular, so that we won't die so horribly when we run into him randomly. Anyway, this is the Hydra. The Hydra is quite a beast. Alright, we have ourselves a Soul Chopper formation so that everyone will have an attack up, because Aya, or Moku and, uh, Yo Moku and Yomu are basically the main offensive here. But we have Aya here as a side, as a side, uh, character, because we need somebody to reflect breath attacks with this here. As long as he's able to do that, she won't, she won't, uh, she'll defend us as many times as she can. In the meantime, we raise our attack up to Yomu, because she is the one that's going to be doing all the damage here. As for this Hydra thing, occasionally he'll cast a lot of physical attacks and such, but his main method is using his breath attacks. So, yeah, this thing, a lot of its attacks are breath attacks, basically. So, you want to use Aya's favorable wind to block any attack that he may bring on you. Other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Nothing too majorly important about him other than that, yeah, he casts breath attacks, which is it. That's all he really does. But, so many breath attacks equal a lot of damage. So, yeah. You may want to be careful with that. Now, oh, Yomu buffed up, good to go. We have Sane as the leader to do this. Increase all stats greatly. Now, let's see what happens when Yomu is fully buffed, good to go, and is ready to kill. Let's see if I can raise, uh, Moku's attack as well, before she attacks. Yes, I can. Sweet. 2300? Not bad, not at all. But, with Yomu's buffs, she should do plenty of damage. Yeah! That was over 6,000 damage. That was beautiful. Alright, but other than that, though, you just have to keep defending yourselves against his physical attacks. That's pretty much all there is to it. As everyone else's box are good to go, you just kind of go have it your way. I don't think this thing is weak to anything in particular, so main physical attacks and you should be golden. Thankfully with Moku, she can actually heal everybody with her last word. And yes, as you can see, it does have a regen. So, you want to try and kill this thing and do as much damage as possible before it actually like, does anything. Uh, just might as well. If you can equip uh, Yomu with the sword that has Dragon um, Slayer, then good for you. Go right ahead, because that'll bring in a lot more damage. But as it is, nothing too special. But practically a mini boss, if you will, so you have to make sure you have a party set up just for this guy. But alone, he gets 5,000 EXP, which is quite nice. And the last enemy we have here is sort of also mini boss ish, but not truly. But it's not that bad either. The Chimera, which is a beast, as you can see. I think for the most part, he also just casts, uh, breath attacks. I think. Don't quote me on this. Not until he starts doing a thing. I want to say he's also weak against an element, but I forgot which one. It's kind of hard to say, considering it's three... It's a chimera with three heads and three separate monsters, with each, which means three separate elements. And... Ugh, I don't know. But in the meantime, I believe the same idea... Hold on a second. The same idea applies here as it did with the Hydra. Physical attacks and... Uh, reflect breath attacks. Because I think the majority of his attacks are breath. So, have fun with that. He's not as strong, though, as the Hydra. And he doesn't really have uh, that much defense. No regen either, so he's not horrible. Just uh, don't uh, don't let him have his way. Other than that, 
uh, how about it? But yeah, these two, I don't know, I don't know why we didn't run in, into either or earlier, but who knows. Also, they're apparently weak to slash, so that's good. That's another thing. Illic is 2400, but I don't think you really need as much setup as I did. I think the most you need is defense up from it. And that should be about it. And then we start the video off a proper. Hey there, people of the internet world, it's Kibatsu, and welcome back to Let's Play The Genius of Sephiroth. Change the party out again to something that should handle this boss pretty simple, but you never know. Also, I just noticed we didn't have the right formation here, so I'm glad I paid attention to that. That, and... Good? Okay. I would have it to something like... this? Hmm, maybe I should, actually. I haven't thought this through yet. Ah, <laughs> uh, shoot. Well, Moku here is our only physical attacker, so maybe I should put it this way. Hmm. In fact, I think I will. Yeah. I think I will. But yes, we have our stuff set up, good to go. Before we do that, there's just one or two more things we have to point out. While grinding, we learned a couple more skills. One being very important, Refresh. Completely heals HP and cures permanent effects. You can get this from the turtle that we ran into earlier. And the easiest way to do it, I found, is to just control him, and you can learn it that way. He's kind of hard to control, but you can run into him, like, alone. So, he's not the hardest to learn this skill from. So there's that. And the last thing... As soon as we find it... Again, as soon as we find it... It takes, me, it takes a minute for me to actually find anything, so you have to excuse me. This one. Poison Mist. Earth Element, Multi-Target, it fix Poison. You can also learn this from the turtle as well, so yeah, you learn two things from the turtle. And also, another couple of items that we got. As soon as we get there, I think it's... no, it's right here. This one we got from the warrior thing that was only weak to dark. Size is reduced to 25%, which is nice. And the last thing... Is another spear. Which appears to be the strongest spear so far. Which is interesting, but pfft, spears. He's never gonna use those. <laughs> uh, sad to say. But we are set up good to go, so let's see what's ahead of us. Dismissed. Uh oh. Oh crud. Well, because the only one that stands up. <laughs> Moku must be pretty strong, Dan. Well, she is probably the only. E Actually, let me see here. Main character, main character. Stage 4, Stage 5, Stage 5, Stage 4... Yeah, Moko's the only EX boss here. Bianca is Stage 6, but... Yeah, I guess an EX boss can handle this. And that's become face-to-face -face with the second sister. Biotopus Uriel Gorgon. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name right. That middle name.
She's not getting all this mess from that pipe, is she? Because, dang, she must be high off her rocker. <clears throat> I wasn't going to say the other thing. <clears throat> wow, her mist must be, like, really powerful. So she's able to amplify her own abilities with this mist. I guess they didn't expect that. But, wow, what a power. Uh, yeah, she's also a turtle. That's great. Typical Raymo. So the second sister of the Gorgon sisters, Biotopis Uriel Gorgon, has shown herself. With the power of the mist, she's a formidable foe. But I doubt we're going to have too much of a problem to deal with this boss. It's boss time with Biotopis! Fun times are to be had, I swear unto you all. Alright, so, the first thing is first. We are going to try and defend ourselves once again. The idea is pretty much the same in that we're going to try and defend ourselves as much as we possibly can while trying to nuke the crap out of her. But the only other thing about this boss is that she has something about her that makes her kind of annoying. As she stated, she has the power of the mist. So because of which, this mist can hurt us by quite a bit. But guess what? We overrode that. I thank Patchy for being so slow that time. Okay. Let's see, Moku needs another turn to defend herself. In the meantime, I'm going to use Hyper Camouflage so that we can defend ourselves. Um, let's do Shield Ball so that we can defend ourselves against that. Um, I think Patchy's going to be starting to do an enchantment, so I think I'll Magic up first. Uh, yeah, might as well. Let's add some water into the land and Marionette. Camouflage, Shield Wall, Marionette, we should not be taking that much damage from her. The only thing we'll be taking damage from on this point is from her Mist. Which, if we can keep Patchy on a field casting basis, then we shouldn't have too much to worry about. Especially considering that her damages aren't really doing much. Which is weird. Um... both have one turn cooldowns. They call it the bomb, though, so I think we're gonna save those for one more turn before I send, uh, her into this. Starlight Barrier, attack up. Apache, go ahead and start doing some damage. In the meantime, Alice, you can little Jess. 
All right, so the basic strategy of this fight is that she is high, she is pretty weak to water, but she's also weak against strike attacks. Not slash or stab, but strike, atta strike attacks, which Moku specializes in. She strikes her foes down, don't you know? And with the ability, with, um, what am I trying to say here? With Moku's ability to change her elemental weapons, she's actually, Moku's actually casting water over fire now. So with that, we should be able to do some pretty hefty damage with this. I didn't cast a camouflage, but I don't think we need it. Yeah! Now look at that! 11,000 damage! That's not even the critical! Bear that in mind! All of us in here either, so there. Dark Mist, Defense Fog. Uh huh. Is that what you're trying to do here? But yes, look at that. We already did like over 20,000 damage from that fight. So yeah, if we have any more issues with this fight, I'm going to be angry. Very, very angry. Um... In the meantime though, Satori and Pacholi are going to be on basic backup, just in case something does go wrong. Thankfully, with Satori's, um, Starlight Barrier, Everyone has to some defense against them. Wow, defense with the mess down? Oh my. That could have hurt! That could have really hurt! Wow! Also, as you just saw, she has a leaf shield now as well. So. Ugh. That's still fun. Um. Crud. Will we be able to be fast enough? Ah! They're making me change strategies here. I don't like that. Well, with our physical defense down, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm gonna help Alice here defend just a little bit more, just in case. But other than that, though, this fight should go pretty well. Water boost is up, good to go, and we should be fine. We don't necessarily have to defend ourselves more often this time, so we should be fine. With Marionette, with Life with Starlight Barrier, with Hyper Camouflage, and everything else. Face our evasion is zero. Moku, finish her off. Finish this fight, and let's all go home. Well, we're not gonna go home, but like, you know, we're just gonna finish this off. Legion us. We have no evasion. We shield ourselves from that damage. The Legion. Moku, have at it. Now that is freaking damage. And from the last attack, she also casts that spell. So with little Legion, we cover everybody up, and we're safe. So that is Biotopus Furio Gorgon down. I had to slow down for a second there to try and, like, paste that whole sentence there. <clears throat> but you saw how much damage Moku did. That was not even a crit. Water, water attack up. Okay. Water Element, Attack Up, All Up, and a High Damaging Attack, technically it's considered high, but you see, 30,000 damage, that's not even a crit, bear that in mind, that wasn't even a freaking crit. Freaking Moku is overpowered as shish, and she just learned Possessed by Phoenix, okay. It's funny though, considering this whole party, except for Nidori, was completely under level, so I had to train him a bit to get him up to a standard level. But, that is it. Biotopus beaten. She's out of her shell, oh no! Hey, she's coming out of her shell! <laughs> well, she can't, technically did, considering she admitted she was using the mist. But, with Moku being able to withstand the mist, and Moku being the powerhouse that she is, she was the perfect opponent for this fight. You gotta admit that, that was pretty great.
One that can disappear in the mist. That's quite an ex excite. Though I don't know if it's as impressive as Anastasis. Yeah, she was... I'm pretty sure she was gonna run away anyway, so... Bleh. Oh well. But with that, the second sister's beaten. I wonder if her third sister's noticed yet. Medusa Gargan is all that remains. How powerful is she? She's the youngest, but I don't know. Also, there's an easy way back, all the way back to the very start of like, that temple if you want. Which is very useful. This wasn't even here before either, which is weird. But yeah, there you go. Before we go through all this seriousness, we have one last area to go through. And boy, is it an area. Is it an area. Welcome to the Corgan Barrier, Stage 21. For once, I agree with Rainbow this time. I'm not fighting you guys, not just yet. <laughs> not just yet. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm not going to this time. No? Good. So, this area, the Gorgon Barrier, this is where we last meet up with the last Gorgon sister. That's proper language right there. <clears throat> but yes, after this area, we're going to come face to face with the Gorgon, Sister Ethos. And from then on, it's Endgame. Only one sister remains, and that's the only person we have to deal with. She says she's the strongest, but we'll just have to see, won't we? So with that said, this is Kibatu. And until we infiltrate Gorgon Barrier, goodbye to you. Laters!